five, kind of still uh, not really the best level of play between these two great players. But Wong seizes the opportunity after being down 8-5 to pull out a very difficult third game at 12-10, and he leads two games to one. Tell me why the paddle Ball is game. one color on one side, one color on the other. Well, in the old days, they used to have red or black on both sides, and, and players would have different types of coverings on one side than the other. Matter of fact, that was one of the things in my style that uh, I, I played only with one side of the racket. So on the other side of the racket, I had, I had a fast side on one side, and I had a slow side on the other. So I would, it was red on both sides, and you couldn't tell which one I was using. So it created a lot of deception and a lot of errors, and the, the, the sport decided that, that if, if they changed the color on each side, that way a player would know if you're using a pimpled out or a different type of surface, the color would right away give the player the, the, the know-how to handle the oncoming ball. The sport was becoming way too deceptive, and actually it kind of hurt my career a little bit. So you, you had an advantage. They changed the rule because of you. They changed the rules in basketball because of Will Chamberlain, and they changed the rules in table tennis because of Dan Seymour. Well, I'd like to think that, but I don't think it was just because of me. What happened was in 1977, the Chinese saw the way I was playing, and they were filming all my matches. They came out the next year playing a similar style to what I was using, and they just dominated the world of table tennis because they were the best. Not only were they the best, now they had this deceptive uh, racket that they were using, and uh, it was only a short time after that that it was outlawed. Interesting a little piece of uh, history there. Now, we are at two games to one. Wong the advantage in games. Ooh. Ball drops over the net. Yeah. Nice touch there by Wong. That ball was loaded with sides from Baxman by Ma. It's sort of a cross block on the loop. Wong just touched it very lightly and dropped over the net. Oh, he kind of he got him leaning the wrong way there. Side spin, toss spin, served there by Ma. Wong steps in and uses the back end to the wide corner, clean winner. That's the difference between the shake hand and pen holder. Shake hand player does not have to leave his position. Ma has to guess and anticipate turning the corner. That time he paid the price. Nice little flip there by Wong. He starts to control the point. Back hand to back hand. There's the forehand. Ma misses long with the back hand block see that Wong had control of that from the get-go. The long reach of Wong Lee Chin really is one of the great things of his why he's world champion. He's able to handle the net play better than almost any player in the world. Three, Ma, five, Ma. Up 3-1 in this game has played two or three points where he's lost his concentration and has got back and hit some very strange shots. Like right there he just got caught in the middle and looked like he wasn't even thinking. But it was the techniques of Wong that got him off balance and put him in a, in a no-win no position. It's a great backhand by Wong. Look at it right over the top. And Wong starting to assert control in this final. Up 2-1, starting to play better. Ma getting pushed out of position and off balance repeatedly.